Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've only just joined us, today I've jumped on the Triumph Scrambler 400X. This is the first of three days I'll be riding this bike. I've already rode the KTM 390 Adventure. I've already been on the brand new Royal Enfield Himalayan 450. And now it's my turn on this beautiful Scrambler. Like always, we've got an early start. It's about six o'clock in the morning. Oh, we've got another over 400K to do today. It's gonna get even hotter, they reckon, as we head further north. We're going to a place called Prodotur. It's in the Andhra Pradesh region. So as we travel around India, we go through different states. This is the Tamil Nadu state. We're off to Andhra Pradesh where the people change, the language changes, and it gets a bit hotter because of the contour of the country. It also gets a little bit lighter as we head north, which might help us with the uh, loading up of the bikes first thing in the morning. So yeah, first time on the Triumph Scrambler 400X. And the first thing I've noticed when I've got on the bike is the seat is comfortable. After riding that KTM 390 Adventure for the last three days, I'm glad to get off it, I'll be honest. As much as it's been a very good bike, the seat is absolutely rock hard on that. How they can have an adventure bike with such a hard seat is beyond me. The whole purpose of, a, an, of an adventure bike is to have a bit of comfort, you know, have that correct riding position. But like I said in the earlier videos, that 390, it's a Duke with a dress on really. So yeah, I like, I like what Triumph has done with the bike. The looks look absolutely fantastic. Again, I was looking forward to riding all of these bikes. Uh, so I've got three days on this and um, we're gonna clock up a few miles for sure. Uh, I've been told we're going to get on some, some twisty mountain roads as well. The clutch is really light on it. It doesn't have the quick shifter like the KTM does. Little things, like this morning, I was putting the tank bag on and it's the, it's the only bike that's got a flatter tank. So with the tank bag, it sits really nice. Whereas on the KTM, the way the tank was shaped, even though the, the tank bag was strapped down nice and tight, it kind of just doesn't sit right on the bike, whereas it does on this one. <laughs> We're into the madness of India already. <laughs> The other thing I've noticed straight away with this bike as well, when you roll off that throttle, you get a nice little growl from the uh, the exhaust. It's got like the twin pipes on this one. I do think what Triumph have done with this bike just look pretty cool. I'm really glad they've introduced a lighter weight scrambler to their collection. I wonder how Jimmy's getting on with the, uh, the KTM this morning. He was having problems with the scrambler. He's a shorter rider, he's five foot four. And um, he was saying the problems with the kickstand and I totally get what he means when I, I'm five foot nine. I got on this bike this morning, although the KTM has got a seat height of 855. And uh, I think this one's coming in at sort of 835 if I remember correctly. The side stand on it is really awkward. You have to lean the bike over to the right in order to get the stand down on the left. So if you are a shorter rider, it's virtually impossible. The only benefit of that, the bike is really upright, but I reckon on a windy day, you've got to be a little bit careful with that. The bike's a nice upright position. The tank feels wider this way, so you, you can't really tuck your, your knees in, but that's the point of the riding position on this bike. It's comfortable, very comfortable. I do like the ergonomics on it. Me personally, I might want to lift those handlebars just a little bit further forward. One thing it is, it's bloody quick. The, the throttle action on it is really smooth. Even if it's a, there's not as much vibration as the other two bikes when you get into the, the higher rev range on it.
The Himalayan's looking good. Look yeah, like this. Comfortable. How are you finding that? How's the seat? How's the seat? Right. Yeah? yeah? You must have a tougher ass than me. Yeah. Well, let's just have a quick look at the bike. I mean, credit due. It does look nice. Like I say, I think it's great they've introduced this lightweight bike to their fleet. I think this will be really good on the lanes, on the trails. But yeah, so far, just the, the quick run we've just done on the motorway, very comfortable. The suspension is working well. I was a bit concerned about these uh, these these foot pegs. Is it? There's quite a bit of movement in them. I mean, I don't know how, you know, if you were to go and launch the bike, whether they would uh, take a, a heavier person's weight, but they feel all right once, you, once you're riding, but there's a little bit of flex in them. hit 100 kilometers already we've been absolutely flying on these three bikes um, the triumph is holding up well the suspension feels probably a little bit softer than the other two although on the KTM you can dial in the front forks handling the road well it's handling the bumps great the, the brakes are good although I do have to pull the lever in quite a bit to get it to stop so whether that's just a case of um, bleeding the brakes but the uh, the road surface has been quite bumpy some broken roads in parts seems to be handling these uh, speed bumps okay it feels like you're on something bigger to be honest I don't know if that's because of the the way you sat on the bike and it's wide the tank's wide, but the, the power delivery is nice. You find with like the KTM I was riding, it kind of brings out the hooligan in you, and you end up just wanting to kind of thrash it everywhere. Whereas this, I'm quite happy sitting in the, the higher gears. The bike tends to sit better between kind of 85 kph and about 110. After that, you get a little bit battered by the wind. But, but just get on these brakes. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're... Uh, are we going to be stopping? No. Yes. The fuel lights come on already. We've still got one bar left, so... I'm sure we're going to be uh, fueling up soon. I mean, that is the uh, advantage of this Himalayan here. It has got a decent sized tank on it. The range is pretty good. Yeah, you do have to be a little bit careful where you park this thing, just the kind of the way it sits. It's great for getting on because you can just step over, especially with the luggage. But um, yeah, if you're on a bit of a camber, um, it, could, uh, it could quite easily um, go over. Uh, just had a little bit of bit of breakfast and a cup of coffee. The guys are on the chai. Wow. Um, so that's the lotus flower yeah, I was telling you, but that's what's an Indian flag. Yeah, is this the one that uh, closes up overnight? Yeah, it closes at night. Opens during the day. Yeah. Such a beautiful, uh, such a beautiful flower. It's the first day that I've been able to smell. It's the first day that I feel all right. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. This coffee is absolutely amazing. The, the Triumph, the build quality on it, I'm actually really impressed. Uh, all the switch gear and everything feels really good. Everything's laid out nicely. There's no overcomplicated electronics with these bikes. I think the dash suits the bike as well. The brakes work really well. The suspension's been handling the road really well. It's uh, been just been bouncing over the bumps. Just feel a little bit softer on the suspension than the Himalayan or the KTM, although the KTM can be uh, dialed in on those front forks. It feels
feels quick, but it doesn't. You don't feel like you need to ride it quick. I mean, fundamentally, it comes down to what type of riding you're going to be doing. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, nobody makes bad bikes anymore, so it all comes down to personal preference. And uh, these are three fantastic bikes. I mean, this bike does feel light, and I think it'd be great. Hopefully, we'll get to take it down some little trails and give it a little bit of an off-road test. I would say the Himalayan and the KTM definitely feel more nimble than the Triumph, although this one feels the lightest one. So is Ted Baker. He had, well, I'm better now, He Simon. had Ted Baker body wash and face cream. Yeah. And aftershave. <laughs> well, I'm better now, Simon. So, what about this? Get ready. Dolce & Gabbana. He's a fucking fashion. He's a fashion victim, eh? So he's lost his gloves. He's got his tang bag on upside down. And um, he's even, he's even got his map upside down. You know where you're going, you silly prick. Chittor. So yeah, we're off to a place called Chittor. It's uh, in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Alex was just saying there's two Chittors. There's one in Tamanado and there's one in Android Press, so got to make sure you get the right one. Yeah, I do like the, uh, the sound of this scrambler. Right, let's crack on. We're just going to get some fuel. This one's a bit uh, strange. I've not seen a setup like this. It's got like a little little barrier for the motorbikes. I guess it stops people kind of pushing in like they do at the uh, the fuel stations. <laughs> we just figured out how to open the uh, the tank. Yeah, that's what you call full. That is full to the brim, and you kind of need it with this little Triumph. The little tank seems to be the uh, the fuel thirsty beast amongst the three. Draw the time. Let's just check the time. So yeah, nearly nearly 20 past eight in the morning, and uh, I've just done 103 kilometres. So we're gonna probably go clock up another 100k, have another quick stop. But all three of these bikes are, are super easy to ride. You don't you don't feel like you've got to muscle them about too much. There's just a nice amount of power off the throttle. I think the Himalayan and the KTM feel a bit lighter on the front, whereas this one feels that little bit heavier. I wouldn't say it's as, uh, as nimble, but it's still light. It's still a light bike. I like the exhaust tone, just as you drop off that throttle. It's got a nice little growl to it. Clutch and gearbox work together well. Nice and light, positive changes. The overtaking's nice and easy as well. Like I said, enough power there. In, in all the gears, it does pull nicely. The bits of broken road, it just glides over. And if you drop it down a couple of gears, and open it up, wait for them revs to build up, it flies. a slightly different power delivery to the other two bikes but I think it might be the quickest but yeah it stops stops well like I say you you got to pull that front brake in a little bit more than uh, the others but just come to a nice stop Whoa! we got a bit of air then 
you probably can't tell on camera but when we're going over some of the broken road sections it is a bit uh, a bit uneven there's a few deep potholes and the bike seems to be performing really well over them <laughs> we are in the back streets here ATM is probably going to be quicker, 0 to 60. But I think the Triumph Scrambler has got the legs to overtake. Oh, where's your hydro pack? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Oh, big pothole. That come up a bit quick. And the sun is shining and that temperature is rising every time I come to a little stop. Whoa, every time I come to a little stop, you can feel the heat of the sun burning you. Just get up on the pegs. I think Triumph have got the standing position quite right. But just, uh, just a quick stood up on the pegs there and um, yeah, it feels comfortable standing up on this bike. So I'm pretty sure it would be uh, great to do a bit of you know, lightweight off-roading. I'm not quite so sure about the, 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 the springiness in the foot pegs, but it doesn't seem to be causing me a problem. Who's yet? Watch out for the uh, the little goats. There's loads of them around here. Oh, out the way! Out the way, goat! <laughs> so we've been going across the plateau in the Andaparesh state. You just get these big lumps of rock in the background. So we're just starting to climb. Quite tight, hairpin corners. And again, the Triumph just got the right amount of power to get up the quite steep mountain roads. So the brakes are really good as well. The back brake works well. But this is where the little scrambler becomes a fun bike. Fantastic as you come winding down. Yeah. You see it? They're carrying a guy out of a truck. Uh, what, dead? The truck's gone off the road. Fuck. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I just caught a glimpse, but just saw some locals just as we come to the bottom of the mountain there carrying what we believe is a, a dead person out of a truck. Just looking for the hotel. Hope that ain't it. <laughs> Give me a chance to get on the pegs. Yeah, the standing up position is not bad. Are we here? Is this it? Yeah, it's pretty remote this is, but it looks pretty lush in there. I'm guessing that's where we're going. Yeah, we are here. What's the temperature now? 41, 41 degrees. There you go, guys. We have arrived at the accommodation. Just have a quick look. Wow, look at this place.
so there you go then guys we've done 433 kilometers today in up to 41 degrees of heat the triumph scrambler 400 has performed very very well super impressed with this bike and uh, make sure you catch me in the next episode still got two days left on this and don't forget if you're not subscribed to the channel please do so give us a like and i'll see you in the next one